Welcome to Opalesk TV. I'm Matthias Knapp, and today we're taking you to see the Ambrus Group in New York. Ambrus is a carry neutral tail risk firm that is designed to generate large returns during market crashes. Unlike most tail risk strategies, the team uses proprietary trading to be flat during normal environments. With fantastic returns, Ambrus has outperformed its competitors in this space since inception and believes this style of tail risk hedging is a great solution for investors looking for a robust way to protect their portfolio from market crashes. You'll get to know the three founding partners of the firm as we discuss how they are able to generate these returns and learn more about their business. Next, I want to thank Chris Cedio for joining me today. So, I always see you on CNBC discussing volatility, so I really look forward to our discussion here. Let's begin with, Chris, what exactly is carry neutral tail risk? Thanks so much for having us, Matthias. This type of strategy is designed to produce large returns during market crashes while aiming to be flat during normal markets. So investors use us as a defensive alternative to protect their portfolio from a crash. You know, when you traditionally think about tail risk hedging, investors are used to experiencing a constant bleed. And we believe that can be costly. And over a certain period of time, it defeats the purpose of what a hedge is designed to do. So this style of carry neutral tail risk hedging allows investors to participate in the best of both worlds, having a good defensive hedge without depleting large amounts of capital while you wait for volatility to erupt. So that's the big thing, isn't it? So controlling the bleed. And you guys are the only ones I know who aim for zero cost of carry. Why do other funds then just accept the bleed? Yeah, they are two completely different business models. The same way there's a difference between passively buying the S&P or going to Citadel's equity fund. Legacy tail risk hedging approaches, what many would consider the traditional model, focused on strategic and solution-based application. So this is a style of hedging that the vast majority of managers use. They lay out the cost of the tail, and they allow that to bleed away to zero. What we are doing is what you consider tactical. This is more so for investors that are looking for a cost-efficient way to hedge. The business model is similar to what you would see on a derivatives market-making desk. Trade around these intraday edges to keep a flat book, but you warehouse convexity so that when volatility erupts, you have a large return. So that makes a lot of sense. So you guys actively trade and use the profits to control the bleed, right? Exactly. Hedges need to perform in a tail event and not be a net drag on an investor if we go a long time between tail events. We design our product to solve that problem by using short-term proprietary trading to minimize the bleed that comes with being long volatility. Chris, can you also tell us a bit more about your background? So is there anything in your careers that made you uniquely fit to run this business? Yeah, early on in my career, I was a prop trader on two different desks, Chimera Securities and Xanthus Capital. Prior to joining Ambrose, I spent three and a half years at BMO Capital Markets, and most of my time there was spent trading exotic derivatives. So culturally as a firm, our trading philosophy is geared towards what you would see at a proprietary trading firm. And that's really because of our roots in that space. So that's interesting. Thank you, Chris. So, Will and Sal, you both have unique backgrounds as well. And Will, it seems you have been trading independently for a long time. While Sal, I understand you worked at some of the large firms like Morgan Stanley and Citadel. Up until founding Ambrose, I spent my career as an independent trader. Trading my own capital, I always prioritized alpha over scale. I was fairly successful in that endeavor for nearly a decade. I became friends with Chris during my trading career. As he was planning to launch the business, he came to me to help build out the bleed mitigation strategies. I fully believe in tail risk, and I think being able to deploy it in a carry neutral setting is the absolute best use case there is. So I was excited to join him in co-founding Ambrose. So my background is in quant trading. I worked at Morgan Stanley in New York first in credit derivatives and then in commodities. And after that, I left to work at Citadel in Chicago from 2006 to 2012. I was in Stratarp Equity first, and then I was asked to run technology for the quant credit business. I left Citadel to trade my own capital. 
Uh, I've known Chris and Will for a long time, and I know these guys are great traders. So when they asked me to join the firm, I thought it was a great opportunity. So that means the strategy makes money when wall goes up, yet it stays flat when wall goes down or when wall doesn't change. So it seems like you struck a really great balance here. How exactly do you do that? There are two buckets that make up the strategy portfolio. Bucket A is straightforward. It's the convex protection we're acquiring. Bucket B is the bleed mitigation bucket. The returns from those trades are what offset the losses from the protection during years with no vol event. The bleed mitigation trades alpha are based upon structural fractures we've identified over years of trading. So think of order imbalances that we're able to forecast, most of which are intraday trades. The edge from these imbalances is capacity constraint, which we actually view as an advantage because it makes it more likely institutions will not bother to gobble them up. I was wondering, how does the investor know that these bleed mitigation strategies are not going to compromise the portfolio? Well, Matthias, first and foremost, I want to be clear. The absolute highest priority with the bleed mitigation strategies is to ensure they will not impact the portion of the portfolio that is responsible for investor protection. Meaning, if VIX spikes to 60, nothing we're trading for bleed mitigation can lose a consequential amount of money as a result of that and in turn hurt the investor's tail protection. That is protective measure number one. Protective measure number two is to be sure that all of these trades have capped risk. This is done via closing positions intraday or if they're held overnight using a corresponding option. So think if we're long stock, we might buy puts against that so we can know what the max risk is. With that said, generally speaking, we want to focus on positions we can flatten out at the end of the day. Those are the strategies that are most resilient and keeps management of the risk portfolio very simple. So basically two bucket portfolios, right? In which one handles protection and the other handles bleed mitigation, correct? Yes, exactly. And at the same time, these two buckets are completely uncorrelated and unrelated to each other, right? That's how we can ensure the entirety of the portfolio is robust. But the elephant in the room is that you can have flat returns, but that doesn't tell me that you will actually protect me in the crash. How can I know if a tail risk strategy is going to protect me? Simplicity is critical. Vanilla options on the S&P are going to be much more predictable in a crash than complex structured derivatives. Think of 2008, for example, when all these complex structured derivatives that were supposed to hedge people actually ended up increasing the contagion. The instruments that we hold are directly inversely proportional to the market. But when exactly do you begin to make money? I would imagine if the VIX is at 30, but that is not really a tail event. Yes, that is correct. So these are not the strategies you hold if you are expect, worried about a 5% drop in the markets. So we would expect to make uh, money as the VIX goes to 40 and above. But there are other factors involved, such as the market positioning and the velocity of the VIX move. For example, in 2020, a one delta two-month option on the S&P returned over 13,000%. So as we're coming to the end of this video, if there's one thing, one takeaway about what you do, what would it be? In one sentence, we provide massive crash protection without bleeding investor capital in normal markets.